Hi, today we're going to look at a practical example of a flow that is using multiple tabs in Playwright. This is not going to be an automate together because I have tried this once before and so we're not really doing it live, so to say. And it's not going to be, you know, a full on frontal tutorial, uh, kind of an in between, if you will. So what we're going to do this time around is I found a nice little website called TLK.io, a simple web chat. And we are going to write a script that is going through the motion of uh, chatting. Well, we're, we're going to be chatting with ourselves, essentially. We're going to uh, use two uh, or impersonate two users and join the same channel and then exchange, you know, a set sequence of, of texts, let's say. Multiple tabs is a Playwright core functionality. So you are able to access it both if you're using Playwright test or just Playwright library. We're going to start out using Playwright library. And at the end, we're also going to show how that would look uh, using Playwright test. Of course, given that the, the core of the uh, page interaction is essentially the same, you're not going to see a big difference. Uh, but we're still, we're still going to do that in case uh, somebody finds that helpful. Keep in mind, the focus of this video will not be around best practices or the best way to automate uh, a chat application or whether you should automate a chat application or whether you should use multiple tabs with it. It's just, again, a practical example of how you can use Playwright support for multiple tabs to play around with multiple tabs. So let's dive right into it and start a new project. I already created a new folder here. I'm just going to do a quick npm init minus y. We can also chain the other command here, which for us is going to be an npm i playwright. That's going to get us started. So now we can create our script file. And we can get the basics rolling. Okay, now in another case, I would just probably start typing away here uh, the the uh, actions in the test, starting with a probably a page dot go to. But what we're doing here is going to be a little bit different, just because of the the multiple um, the multiple tabs and the flow that we're going to follow. To save some time, what I want to do is actually run code gen against uh, the website that we're seeing and walk through the steps that one user would take to join a channel and type in um, the first message, essentially. So let's take a look at that. All right, we've launched Playwright Code Gen. Now we are on tlk.io, and we can go through the motions of joining a channel. So a channel will be identified by a string of text. In this case, we could use my own channel and hit join. Okay, once we're in, we are required to enter a username. We could use user one. Hit enter. Now you will see that we have a text area where we can type our, our message. Hi there. And we hit enter to shoot it out. So now, while we're here, I'm going to stop recording because actually this is uh, it's pretty nice what we have here. Uh, what I want to do is understand how state works here because what we could do is essentially with Playwright, uh, we could open a second tab here and uh, pretty much just navigate to the same website and try and join the same chat and see what happens. Now, one of two things can happen. Uh, we can essentially be recognized as the same user or we initialize a completely brand new session. Probably we're going to be recognized as the same user there. Uh, we can try again. It was my own channel. That was the string. So I'm just joining from my second tab here. Hit join. And you see that we are user one. So I can type hello, and this will still be coming from user one. So we are recognized to be the same user. So probably what we would want this to do is actually we would open a separate context, go tlk.io, uh, enter that same string, so my own channel. And now hopefully we are asked to enter our username. Yes. So now we could use user two. And if this is a little bit, you can see that here we are indeed a different user. Uh, if this is a little bit confusing, uh, once we put it down in code, it won't be as much. So don't worry about that. All right, let's jump in. 
All right, we're gonna copy the plain JavaScript here because we are not yet set up to use player test. We're gonna show that at the end of the video as well. So here we go. Let's clean this up a little bit. All right, let's close Cogen and see if we can run this successfully. Looks successful so far. Of course, we could have also done this as a non-headless thing. Just by adding the headless false parameter up there. As you can see, this is extremely quick. We could have probably slowed it down a little bit with slow-mo. Still very fast, but actually if we change that fill to a type and we go about typing each character individually, yeah, you see, that buys us a little bit of time and uh, we see a bit more what's going on. Of course, we've been spamming the same channel here, but now it's time for us to start with the interesting stuff and introduce a second user. So let's get started. First off, let's come up with two users. Uh, we will just have user one be named uh, Anna and uh, user two, maybe just Bill. So let's go ahead and create uh, context and pages for Anna and Bill. Again, we need to split the context here because uh, otherwise we will be messing things up with the users as we just saw uh, inside the application. So um, let's create context Anna and context Bill. As well as page Anna and page Bill. Okay, so as we've seen, both pages will essentially need to go through both pages, both users, uh, will need to go through the same few uh, initial steps before they can write to each other. They will need to load uh, tlk.io, then they will need to uh, select the chat, enter a username. That part is pretty much in common, and I think we can just do things for Anna first and then for Bill pretty much the same. Uh, so we probably can just use a little loop here and be a little smart about things. So let's try to avoid a tiny bit of code duplication with that. What I could do is just create uh, an array of objects with the objects being the users. Then I can use a for off loop. And in here, again, we will be pretty much doing uh, the first bit of what we have entered or what we have recorded using Cogen, I guess, until pretty much until here. So we're gonna copy that into our uh, for loop here and we're gonna do the same thing for both users. Let's factor out the channel name To prevent this from being too fast, we can add temporarily a wait for timeout. Again, that's not something that would go into production. What you can also do is, of course, using the page.pause. In this case, it would be, let's say, page Anna.pause or something like that. And just hit a node chat. You can see that we are uh, running two separate browser windows, right? We have two separate contexts. Both users enter the chat here. We can see them in the list of participants. So we're pretty much ready to go. This is what we wanted to achieve. All right, we can interrupt that and keep going. Let's start having these two users send messages to each other. We'll have Anna initiate the conversation. So what we see here, if we run this a couple of times, is that we are actually always ending up in the same channel and we have uh, text messages from before that uh, a previous user that has not timed out has written or you know whether the user has timed out or not is not that important but we still can see their message so what we want to do here is probably just enter a new channel each time and how do we do that well there's a bunch of ways of course uh, for us what i think might make sense is just to have 
uh, the channel name here be dynamically generated. We could do something like, you know, take a date dot now, turn that into a string, and uh, let's see if that fixes our problem. Yeah, that seems to work. Let's see if we actually, let's see if it's actually working. Okay, yeah, no stale messages, no stale users in there. So we're good to go. So what do we do next? Well, Anna is saying hello. Maybe Bill should also say hello. Let's see how that goes. We're just repeating the same actions as before. And all right, that looks good. So what now? We could make Anna uh, answer the question. And uh, of course we could go ahead and just copy the code, but uh, you know, and change a couple of things here and there. But uh, whenever that happens, that's a good indication that you want to probably create a function that does that for you, right? Um, and uh, that in this case, you know, would be kind of wrapping three low level interactions, a click, a type, and a, and a keyboard press into a higher level, more, let's say, uh, human level kind of interaction. So instead of these three little steps, you would have something like, uh, you know, uh, send new message or, or type new message or something like that. And that is something that you will see commonly in, you know, patterns such as page object and other patterns in uh, UI automation and browser automation where um, that comes uh, over and over again, right? So you try to make your tests essentially be about these higher level user interactions. And then whenever something changes in how those are implemented, you have to change it only in one place, right? So in the function definition. So without going too much into that, let's just clean up our code by creating that function that I was talking about. What we'll need in this function as arguments are the user and uh, the message. Just to be clear, what we're doing here is not page object, right? Uh, page object is a separate topic that we're gonna look into as well. Uh, here, we're just creating this function just to make our life easier and uh, reuse a little bit of code. All right, we cleaned up our code a little bit and added another message to our exchange. Let's take a look at how that looks now. Let's take a look at whether that works without the slow-mo. I'm gonna say the slow-mo makes it look very nice and very fluid. And yeah, we can see here that the uh, uh, bills page, let's say, is not uh, refreshed properly here. So we could actually uh, manually do a refresh here and see all the messages on inside as well. So we can see here essentially the last user that uh, has sent the message will have everything up to date. Uh, the other one not unless they uh, run a refresh, a page uh, refresh. But, uh, and there's ways around this, of course, like you could kind of force that by adding uh, reloads uh, at the end of the interaction, but we don't really care for that. So we're just gonna go ahead. So that concludes our short experiment here. So what we saw was that uh, we can actually isolate the state by using multiple contexts. That means that, uh, you know, if we had cookies or local storage or something like that uh, uh, saved for a specific website, 
where you know maybe those cookies would be checked and and used to log us in automatically again um, into a previous session. Well, uh, in this case, you know we can avoid that. You know that would would have messed up our chat essentially. Would have always been the same user. But with Playwright, we can actually easily kind of avoid that by creating separate contexts. As you see, we create one for Anna, one for Bill. And uh, in each context, then we add a page, right? One for Anna, one for Bill. And uh, what we did afterwards was we essentially created just an array of uh, user objects just for um, saving, some, uh, saving ourselves some uh, typing here. So we created a little, um, a little for off loop here, and we essentially went first through uh, all the, let's call it, uh, login procedure for Anna, and then we did the same for Bill. And uh, when they were joining a channel, they had to join the same. So we, uh, again, keep in mind, this uh, const here gets generated once with the current uh, time uh, timestamp uh, because we are running a single script, right? And uh, of course, after that, we had a little chat session. Uh, and okay, here we're using uh, pause. Of course, we can get rid of that. Uh, we can also get rid of the headless here and just have this, uh, or sorry, uh, the headless false. We can just take that away and kind of go through the script uh, just fine. Um, this was one way of doing things, right? Here we had our, our little exchange and we could make that longer. Uh, we could probably add more users quite easily. Uh, we could uh, make a better function here. We could kind of write a whole script, right? Uh, based on a, maybe a little array as well. Um, but uh, that is kind of something that you can try out uh, if, you're, uh, if you're interested in this topic. We can pretty much run the same using Playwright test. What you probably want to do is just import the browser fixture here and then keep going, keep handling the context on your own. That being said, this could also be set up in maybe more interesting ways. We could actually probably split this into separate tests or separate scripts. It really doesn't matter here if we're using the, the runner uh, Playwright test or not, but how would things look if we were actually creating independent scripts that were run at the same time and one was written for Bill and one for, one for Anna? Uh, how would we wait and then which waiting strategies would we use uh, to know when to actually write a message? Uh, in response to another. That's also uh, actually a pretty interesting e exercise, a good way to practice waiting strategies and just something interesting to do. I hope this little example was useful in kind of uh, giving you an idea about how we can control, uh, you know, multiple tabs and also kind of split their state using different contexts. Uh, if that's all still a little bit confusing or you don't see how or when we would use this in other use cases uh your your maybe the the notion of state is not so clear and the notion of context is kind of abstract uh, then hang in there we're going to have more uh, tutorial styled videos to hopefully fill those gaps for you for now thanks for watching i hope you learned something and until next time